Hi, man, Drops Rock, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. You will witness the ZX81 project we started on a few weeks back. And Peter has kindly, from ZX Renew, has kindly sent some parts for us to get on with it. So these parts are as follows. This part is for a rubber key spectrum, so I'm going to put that away for now because we don't need that. But we will need these. This, of course, is a new keyboard. And something I thought was interesting here, it says rub out, oh, like a pencil eraser, we're gonna rub out. So we need to fit this and get it all sorted. But before we even go there, uh, and by the way, this is a composite mod, again, even further in the distance, before we go there, we need to power it up. Uh, and to do that, you need a wire, which I didn't have, so I've made one. You can see it's really long. This was a microphone wire from a car Android head unit, and it was really long. It's about 10 foot long, so that's as long as you're ever going to need. I put it up to the power supply, and I've ensured that the tip is positive. So it's 9 volts positive at the tip, and I can plug that right in here. It's actually turned off at the moment on the bench power supply, but it does fit pretty well. I quite like that. Uh, and the next thing I had to make was a RF lead, because RF leads are really hard to find, now you don't have many of those. So what I did is I took a RF extension cable and I chopped off the end and I soldered on a single phono. Now my plan is to see if we get anything out of this. We know the keyboard's definitely not going to work because that was disconnected previously. Um, I do have a CRT telly over there, so we're gonna plug it all in, see if we can tune it in. Because if we get any life in this, I think the first thing we do is clean it up and fit the keyboard. And if we don't get any life, I guess we start pulling out components and swapping them till something works. It's now hooked up to the television. Drum roll, please. Ah, uh, nothing. This brings back some old memories, waiting for the little line to move across. Fortunately, though, I am seeing some indications on the screen via some ghosting that there is a bit of a picture. So with a bit of luck, it should stabilise and find something for us to look at. OK, it's a bit noisy. I wasn't sure why it's so noisy, but let's try to save it. I think we need to mute the volume. I can't remember if you have sound on the ZX81. Looking at the key map, I'm not sure there is any sound output, hence the noise on the modulator, but I will have to study this a little bit more careful just to be sure. It's time to start thinking how we're going to fit the keyboard. Obviously, we're going to have to rip off the old one. I'm noticing on the edges here that the cut might not quite fit in, so we'll have to have a look at that later to see how that's done. Um, fortunately I have loosened some screws. Not enough screws it seems though because we still have to take this out. Now I checked with the previous owner of this, Mr Pink Mouse himself, and he told me that he built this from a kit. So that's fascinating. That's absolutely fascinating. All of these have actually been hand soldered in, which I guess they would have been hand soldered in back in the 1980s, but I mean hand soldered by a user rather than the company itself. So first things first, let's just get out this bit of ribbon in here because that's going to be no use to us whatsoever, but lots of inconvenience if we leave it in there. Right, so that's out. Great. I mean, technically, we could just plug the keyboard like that and test it, but uh, I'm going to... Let's assume it's it's fine. <laughs> I mean, that, that... The circuitry on the ZX81, there's not too much on there, so it's fine, it's not going to be broken. So you can see here it's slid in slightly here, there's a little aperture that it slides in from the top. Oh, there's a little 1980 date on it, oh, so cute. And then you have a 2014 date on here, that's even cuter, wow, so those have been made ages ago, I wonder if that's a, a project sort of creation date, or if that's actually the manufacturing date of that. That design. It's been sitting in, in ZX Renew's storeroom for a while, if it has. But then how many of these would you shift in a year? How much ZX81s are getting the love? Everybody loves the Spectrum, but I'm sure the ZX81 doesn't get a look in. I think it might be better just to cut this. Hold on to your hats, folks. Oh, so scary. Right, that might have done it. Not quite, it didn't yoink, yoinks, and away. 
we merely brushed aside. Let's try from the bottom here. Oh, I feel bad actually. I'm destroying something that was made in 1980, but then maybe it was designed in 1980. Either way, it doesn't work. Some things you just got to have no love for, and I don't think there's much love for this keyboard. I remember as a kid it was being terrible, and that was back then when... Well, uh, to be fair, I was exposed to a BBC Micro, so anything would have felt terrible compared to that using this technology. But there you go. Amazing. Right, chuck that in the bin. I remember seeing those. They used to fail back in the day because I remember seeing those stuck on the wall in computer repair shops. So they must have just taken them off and stuck them on as a decoration. I'm going to just do a test fit of this. But before I fit it, I want to give it all a little clean. Not like a 8-bit guy or... RMC level clean. I'm just uh, just a gentle clean. That's pretty good, actually. I think I'm just worried there. That corner, just a little little teeny bulge. I might just take a little scissors to that before we fit it. But let's give this all a little wash. Ooh, so fresh! Look, I even got the sticky stuff off. It's a bit shiny though because I use that citrus oil. Don't touch the citrus oil and then touch your sticky thing though. That will be very bad and definitely affect the ability for your new keyboard to adhere properly. So there is the plastic bed, pretty clean. I might just give it one quick wipe just to make sure there's no moisture on there. I think that's pretty good. You could probably use the sort of kit you get with a screen protector for a phone. <laughs> I used a knife and I just just gently trimmed the edges a little bit. I thought they just didn't have the quite correct radius. So let's just do one last test fitting. So we're going to pop that through like that. And I think we've got to start at the front edge, don't we? Let's try to bring it down to the front edge and then push it back up like that. That will be the process. I'm hoping that we don't get an unsightly bulge. I just feel there's a lot of tension there. There's a potential for a bulge. Um, just wondering if there's a knack to doing this, if there's a clever way to remove the paper and then you slowly peel it, like you start in the top right corner and then move across. Let's just see if potentially you could... I, I think we're just going to go for it, you know. Now people are going to be shouting at the screen, don't do that! That is definitely not the way to do it, and hopefully I don't cock it up, because if I cock it up... Ah, oh, look at that, then that is a keyboard to waste. But you can hear, I've got a frog in my throat. I have an excuse that I am currently diseased. Diseased with the lurgies. So let's push this through. But not THE lurgy, not the, the lurgy that's hopefully not on the tip of everybody's lips. Oh my gosh, that is kind of wrong. No, 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 no. Can we correct this? This is tricky. Oh my gosh, is it tenacious? Yes, it is. Ooh. Concentrate. Hmm. What if we start at the back? How will that fare? Oh, 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 he was gentle. He was gentle all the way along. And now it's time to be rough. Look at that. That is a bloody good job. If you need one, go to ZX Renew. Look at that thing. My word. I mean, the only thing that I possibly could have done is maybe put a little kink in the, the flexi before I fitted it because it uh, would help relieve the tension. I don't know what they would have done on the original screen. Ah, just throw it, just throw it across the desk. Um, or you could just go in here, probably just do that a bit. Dink, 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 dink. Let's see. And then push it down. Oh, I think that's, that's grand. That's probably because you're gonna get, who cares? It's absolutely wonderful. Right, flip it over. Next job. By the way, before I continue, Next video, we're going to fit this uh, composite output, but I did notice, look at that, ZX Renew even included new feet, because the feet on this are dead. I only just cottoned onto that, so thank you so much for the new feet. Um, also, I've been recommended to do the 16 kilobit, kilobyte mod on here, 
and I'm just eyeballing this before I put it away just to see which PCB revision it is. So have a good look. That's the PCB revision. Maybe we can just put a bigger chip straight in there. Right, now pop it in. Stop dilly-dallying. Get the ribbon attached. This is not the most intuitive system, but it will work. Okay, that's the first one in. That's a good fit. Second one. Oh, it's a bit stiff. Ah, there we go. I guess we just wrap it all back on itself. Whichever way works. I'm going to bung the screws in and we're going to test it. Let's do this. The moment of truth. You can see it connected. You have the little symbol in the corner and now I'm going to push some keys. New. Ooh. Save. DM. Oh. I think you've got to hold down shift if you want to rub stuff out. There we go. These are called mnemonics. It's definitely working. Boom. <laughs> so there you have it. A rock solid picture on an RF out. And that's probably because it's a CRT and it was designed for it. However, I don't even think I have a digital modern LCD TV with an analog tuner. So that's a problem. But it will not be a problem by in the next video because we're going to install this. And I'm just going to have a quick show of what it is. It's a circuit that you're going to fit inside and it's going to provide a clean signal for the composite out and it allows you to bypass the internal modulator and I'm going to probably have to make up another lead because we're going to need a phono to phono. But that's fine. We're going to do that next time. Attach the feet and then I'm done. Well, done until I fit that 16K. Have you got one of these? Did you have one of these in your childhood? What can I do with it? Can it do colour? I think not. Can it do sound? Probably not. But there is something it can do and you know what it is. You'll let me know what it can do and I'll try it out. Thanks for watching.